I'm not chilling yet. Give me like a minute. Also, I'll see better. Hello, young ones. Welcome. My name is Professor Royalty Free McGonagall, and I'm here to introduce you to Wizards of the Coast's newest fantasy setting, Strixhaven, School of Mages. No, it is not based on that stupid British media property thing. No, 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 no. There are plenty of school wizard places all over Western media in the United States where we got all our inspiration for these fantastic new cards, such as Cody, the wizard accessory that can talk, or Ambrose, the evil professor that's going to punish you in his dark magic class for being bad. Or Liliana, the new professor that's trying to do good to atone for her dark past. Except this time, because Wizards of the Coast is a genius, they had their own little twist in order to make it special and unique and something you never would have thought of before. Dragons. So sit up straight, get out your notes, and prepare to introduce yourself to your four brand new ambassadors to these brand new colleges. Welcome to MTG The Stack. Yeah, man. So can you tell me, what's your specialty? Man, I wasn't prepared to answer this question. Uh... You fancy yourself someone who can sling spells with the best of them, right? Without a question. Now, what is your specialty? Manadors. So, I did Arna Tovic. You fancy yourself someone who can sling spells with the best of them? The best of spells. I'm the best student in this school. What the fuck is your specialty? I, will, I make people wither, and I do. Uh, I play islands. Okay, but like, why is that your specialty? Because I like it when my opponents are having less fun. Counter spells, ramp, skew swarms. Why do you think you're a good fit for the Prismari College? Um, because I picked the Prismari Dragon first when we were getting the commanders ready, and uh, I work here, so. Here. All right. Picking up wands. You work here. Yeah, I work here. Cognify. And you picked it. Oh, don't, don't turn me into a frog. That's why you're a good fit for the Prismari yeah, College, right? It's so weird. You, you, you pique my curiosity at Skip Swarm because I do love a good creature token, and then you fetch my wand like 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 a good man. And like, then you pognify me. Why do you do that? Well. Let's go back to fetch. I fetched a land with my ram spell and I pongified you because I had to answer the threat that you are because you're up higher than I am on the table. That, that's why you're part of the school? Yeah, that's part of why I'm part of the school. Oh yeah, okay. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I am definitely a threat. I feel threatened. With that said, how would you make me proud today? Man. I... What did you build? I built Galazeth Prismari. How will you make me proud today? How the fuck did you build your deck? Yes, right. How does it work? Man, it's a sick deck. I play Galazeth and it makes my mana rocks that aren't mana rocks because I sack them into mana rocks that I don't got to sack. I'm going to cast Crackle with power for X equals 24 to deal 40 damage to each of my opponents. I don't think that you could begin to understand what Quandrix is trying to do, but let me try and put this simply in terms for you and that the first step is the very first lane that you play and then the possibilities are endless. There's creatures, there's lands, there's holding up mana, there's not holding up mana. It's, how, how could you even put it into words? Okay, I'm gonna have to let you know right now, I know there's green in your college, but marijuana is illegal on our campus. I'm not sure if marijuana is canonical to this universe. Um, now I'm sorry. 
I come from America. I don't speak that many languages. I do speak oh, you don't? English. Can you say that in Teacher, English? Teacher, you don't know multiple Can languages? Can you say that in English? You don't know multiple languages. Can you say that in what I make did. you special as a magic player? I did. I make the people, my opponents, wither, and I bloom. Okay, now tell the audience that. There's a fucking camera. You know, it's a pretty good plan. It's a pretty good plan. It's a very good plan. It's a very good plan. Uh, but looking at my notes, it looks like out of the four entrance tests that we played yesterday, um, you passed zero of them. Yeah, you put that in the script, huh? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Uh, what do you have to say for yourself? Uh, Why do you think you're a good fit for Wither Bloom then? Because I'm the best. Isn't that a little presumptuous? Yes. I tried to be nice, and you and the other guy who did bad stuff didn't try to be nice. You're, you're telling me Adrian Hunter, the, the guy whose specialty is islands, to make sure that no one else can have fun, also uh, try to uh, be nice? Uh, yeah, man. I'm getting mixed in these, man. Uh, I don't know what you're trying to do here right now. Me either. Don't, don't you think you should have better focus? I'm so uncomfortable. I, don't you think you ought to be a better student? Prop, yeah, definitely. Adrian? Yeah. Why are you so bad? <laughs> I... Yeah, man. But with that said, <laughs> how will you make me proud today? How will I make you proud? I'll how win. Did you, how did I'll you win? How did I'll you shoot them all? Looking at my notes, it seems you only passed one of the four entrance tests. What do you have to? Oh my god! Thank you. What do you have to say for yourself? What were the other th three questions? Huh. You're the best student, right? Looking at my notes, it seems you only pass one of the four entrance tests. Just one of them. What? That, um, that, that's right. No, it was just one. That's good. You, you did four tests yesterday. I don't. And you passed one. I don't even remember taking these tests. What do you have to say for yourself? I don't remember taking these tests. So, Calvin Traeger, you fancy yourself someone who can sling spells with the best of them, eh? Well, after yesterday, that's pretty funny. I think, I think so, yeah. You think so? I only remember one test, and I passed that test with flying colors. Oh, yeah, that, you're right. You did pass one test. You did pretty good on it. Everyone. It was, was the very only impressed. test that happened. What's your specialty? All right. So my specialty normally is playing white black X decks and slowing the game down to like fucking halt. But uh, last time we did this, um, I did a reanimate strategy, and I like sort of dabbled in it, and I learned a lot from Foley, our Birdman today. And to this time around, I was like, you know what? Hardcore. Let's go. All the fucking. Are you fucking gaslighting me? No! <laughs> I'm just, I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm right. It was the only test that happened. Thank you, Brina. Oh! oh thank you. Mm, thank you, Brina. Thank Student you, Brina. abuse? All right, Calvin Trigger. Why do you think you're fit to represent Silverbow? Did you see incarnation technique? Four entrance tests from yesterday. Do you remember that? You had to do the test with three other applicants. Yes. How will you make me proud today? How will I make you proud? Yeah. All right. Well, if you want the answer to the question that's actually written in the script, um, the way I'm going to make you proud is I built a fucking rad aristocrat stick, right? It's a little light on interaction. I'm going to admit that, right? But, but, boy, oh boy, am I the bad guy that no one can actually respond to adequately. <sighs> don't you think you ought to be a better student? I'll tell my parents about this one. Your parents don't give a shit. Don't you're you right, that's why they sent me here. <laughs> when you're right, you're right. Looking at my notes, it seems you only pass X of the four entrance tests. X is zero. No, X, X is, is two. One. X is what two? X it's is two. two. Man, you'll see how this game goes. You will pass. They'll never know. It can show the whole world what they They can't hear you, and they won't watch that video because it was too long to edit. Fuck you, I'm gonna play it 
I hope so. What do you have to say for yourself? You only won two. What I have to say for myself- These notes don't work for you. You're right. The notes don't work for me because I won half of them. Maybe that was on purpose. Don't you think you ought to be a better student? I see what you've done here. <laughs> don't you think a student here ought to be better? Absolutely. Better than you, right? But that's the whole point of colleges and schools in general. Why would I want to be the best? Oh, you're clever. You're my, you're my favorite one so far. I no, Normally at this point, I, I rib the student being like, oh, why are you so bad? But really, you're not. Humility, you're the humility carries you a very long way. <laughs> oh no! The silver pool player might have Why are really you so good. bad? Dina seems to like you. For Why did I let you do this? So, um, Birdman, Birdman, um, can you go get our young hunter, um, his weapon, please? I'm happy about this. We, we want to get, we want to give this student their, their, their prize, their weapon, their amazing sword. Okay. Cal, you know what? Thank you, Silverquill, for this adequate applicant. Stagehand, their weapon. Author of Shadows, Stonks. This is a gift to you from the Prismari College. I should have made you give me a script. I guess I earned this. Thank you, Grina. This will carry you a long way. This is gonna protect you in trying times. Thank you, Brina. Oh. This really looks like something the Warhawk College would You brought out. the props. I, I don't get it, but you know, but with that said, you are in the Witherbloom College, and I'll be honest, this uh, the best. This is this is the norm for Witherbloom students. Uh, can we can we get his you know little prize that weapon thing? Thank please? you, thank you. Who cast that? Did you please tell me you cast that? I told you. I'm a threat. That doesn't tell me enough. I'm casting giant growth. <coughs> Incarnation technique, stunk. <laughs> Kingdom Hearts, the best anime. I just wish you the best. Thank you, Mr. Hunter. You're welcome. Get the fuck out of here. Bye. Uh, I'm next. So degraded. Got it memorized? You better be able to make this bit work. You know I earned it. Yeah. The 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 fire shot 3000. Here you go. You get a gun. That was not a reference to the British media. Okay, first up there's me, and I have decided to play Galazath Prismari as my dragon for today's video. I'm gonna go ahead and read each of these dragons for you as they are new cards that just came out today. Galazath Prismari is a four drop for red, blue, and two, and is a three four with flying, and like the rest of them, he is an elder dragon. He has the ability when he enters the battlefield, you create a treasure token, and then artifacts you control have tap, Add one mana of any color, spend this mana only to cast an instant or sorcery spell. Because of the way this card is designed, the way I decided to build the deck was Big Mana Spell Slinger. The goal of the deck is to accrue as many artifacts as possible, using cards like Galazeth, Curse of Opulence, Magda, Brazen Outlaw, and even stuff like Togo to drop things like rocks, and then try to end the game with something like a Crackle with Power where X equals 8, or just do something as simple as go infinite with Blue Sun's Zenith. I'm lucky enough to be keeping a 7 card hand, including Expressive Iteration, Curse of Opulence, Spellskite, Tormod's Crypt, Spire of Industry, a basic island, and a basic mountain. Next up we have Guy, and he'll be playing Tanazir Quandrix. This is going to be the green-blue offering from the Elder Dragon cycle, and it's a 4-4 four, four for 5, 1 blue, 1 green, and 3, and this dragon has both flying and trample. When Tanazir Quandrix enters the battlefield, you can double the number of plus one plus one counters on target creature you control, and then, whenever Quandrix attacks, you may have the base power and toughness of other creatures you control become equal to Quandrix's power and toughness until end of turn. Guy has opted to build this deck in a way that uses both of Tanazir's abilities. He's got creatures that have plus one plus one counters, namely Fractals, that you can double when you cast it, and he's built his deck with a go-wide game plan in mind in order to take advantage of his Elder Dragon's triggered ability. 
guy also keeps a hand of seven cards, including Court of Calling, Rishkar, Kima Renegade, Barsik, Talisman of Curiosity, Bark Channel Pathway, and two basic forests. After that we have Calvin, and he's playing, obviously, Shadrick's Silver Quill. This is going to be the Black White Dragon. It's a 2-5 with flying and double strike for one black, one white, and three generic. And it's kind of a wall of text that I'm going to read to you here. At the beginning of combat on your turn, you may choose two. Each mode must target a different player. The first mode is target player creates a 2-1 white and black inkling creature token with flying. The second is target player draws a card and loses a life. And the third is target player puts a plus one plus one counter on each creature they control. Now this obviously means that Shadrix is going to force you to give one of your opponents some type of incremental advantage on your combat step due to his triggered ability. Because of this, Calvin's decided to build this deck in a semi-political way, but the deck's game plan is very Calvin Trigger. He's usually going to try to win with some graveyard-oriented combo, probably involving either an Ashnod's or a Frexian Altar. Calvin's also keeping a 7-card hand, including Scheming Symmetry, Skull Clamp, Ministrant of Obligation, Snowfield Sinkhole, Caves of Kolios, a Snow-Covered Plains, and a Snow-Covered Swamp. Last but certainly not least, we have the one and only Aiden Arnatovic playing Belladros Witherbloom. This is going to be a 7-drop dragon for green, black, and 5, and it's a 4-4 with flying. It has two abilities, one of them is triggered. At the beginning of each upkeep, create a 1-1 black and green pest creature token with, when this creature dies, you gain a life. And then it has pay 10 life, untap all lands you control, activate only once each turn. Mind you, it doesn't care whose turn, so you can activate this on your opponent's turns as well. Now, Aiden wanted to try something a little different. He normally plays big mana lands decks, which Belladros will obviously let you do, but Aiden wanted to use the other side of Belladros, the one that makes 1-1 one -one pest tokens, in conjunction with Aristocrat's pieces to make a machine that wants to kill its opponents using Aristocrat loops. He also has a few backup combo plans, including the infamous Bolas' Citadel, Aetherflux Reservoir, and Sensei's Divining Top loop. Aiden makes the fourth player, keeping a seven-card hand, and he keeps Lamor Wastes, Witherbloom Campus, Into the North, Harness Infinity, the Seer Seer, Woshtrider, and Yodora Grave Gardener. All right, get in another one. Is this the first game we recorded for this video? No one needs to know. All I do know is we're gonna make the mistake of letting Calvin do card game. It will be fine. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. All right, on three. One, wait. two, wait. Now on three. One, two, three, four. Bam. It was on me. <laughs> it's thrill of possibility. <laughs> How and thrilling! That's really good. This is a reference to your stupid life. <laughs> All right. <laughs> this is a reference to your stupid life. Are we good? Is it time? Is it time? Yep. Oh man, I'm so excited because there's a chance that I can't say this for sure, but because of when this video comes out, these mints might be for sale and there might be a link in the description. <gasps> uh, <laughs> untap, upkeep, draw for turn. We're in, we're in it, boys. We're so in it. I'm gonna go with a uh, mountain, and I'll tap it for red. Ooh. I'm gonna play Curse of Opulence, Ooh. and with it, I'm gonna enchant Iden. Yo, come on. Whenever anybody attacks Iden, they make a gold, and I make a gold. And you get it? Um, <laughs> you know, I appreciate it because it's red. That's good. good. I'm good, complete. <laughs> Tormont script. Pass. John needs a hand. That concludes my turn, so I'll move to Guy, and he'll just play a basic forest and pass right over to Calvin, who draws his card for turn, and then he's gonna play a Snowfield Sinkhole tap as his land for turn, passing the turn to Aiden. We're gonna go Witherbloom Canvas, tools in session, bitches. <laughs> After Aiden plays his tap land, the turn ships back to me, so I'll draw my card for turn, and I'll play a basic island as my land for turn. After that, I'm gonna tap out and cast Spellskite, and with nothing else, I'll just pass the turn over to Guy. Guy's gonna draw his card for turn, play a second basic forest as his land for turn. Then he's gonna tap out, he wants to cast a Farseek. That has him searching his library for a land, in this case it's gonna be the new Snow Duel, Rhymewood Falls. With nothing else, he'll pass the turn over to Calvin, who will untap and draw his card for turn. In his first main phase, Calvin's gonna go ahead and drop a Snow-Covered Swamp as his land for turn. Then he's gonna tap out and he's gonna cast a Mind Stone. This resolves, so he wants to tap for one more, and then he wants to play a Skull Clamp. And with nothing else, he'll pass the turn back to Aiden. Aiden will untap and draw his card for turn, and then play a lot more Wastes as his land for turn. After that, he too will tap out, this time to cast Into the North. He's gonna search his library for a snow land and put it into play tapped, and with nothing else, he will just try to pass the turn to me. Make, make sure to pass your deck to Calvin so he can make sure it looks good. Just sloppy motherfucker. Your entire life. 
Hey, lean into it a little bit. We like Ivy. When it comes it's to that. cards. Yeah, but. Yeah, but that's like the method to my madness. You should have handed it. <laughs> that actually looks pretty good. I'd it like to. There's one problem with it. It's not there. aligned with the uh, box. Oh dear. Okay, so Calvin's actually a psycho. Good to go, Aiden. Yeah. On top. Upkeep, draw for turn. Moving back to my turn, I'm gonna draw a card and then tap a blue to cast Ponder. I'll look at the top three, decide I like them, so I'll put them back, and I'll draw the card I left on top and bend the Ponder. Then I'm gonna go ahead and make my land drop for turn, which is gonna be another basic island, and then I will tap for two and cast Magda Brazen Outlaw. With nothing else, I will just pass the turn to Guy. No one has any effects, so Guy's gonna go ahead and untap his lands and draw his card for turn. Then he's gonna play Tide Channel Pathway as his land for turn, and he's gonna tap for two mana in order to cast a mana rock. In this case, he wants a Talisman of Curiosity. After that, he's gonna tap for three and cast a new card, Kazmina Enigma Sage. Kazmina enters the battlefield with two loyalty, but Guy decides he wants to immediately plus two the Kazmina in order to scry a card. So we'll look at the top card. He likes what he sees, so he's gonna leave the card on top, and then we'll just pass the turn. Oh, you could have attacked your I didn't, I didn't realize. No, I didn't have defender. Spellscape doesn't have defender? What? No. I could have a, a, a gold. Stupid me. Wait, you could have cast your commander. After Guy finishes pointing out how bad I am at this game, Calvin's going to drop a Caves as his land for turn, then he's going to tap for 3, and he wants to cast a Ministrant of Obligation. This resolves, so he's going to tap his Mind Stone for 1 colorless, and equip it with the Skull Clamp. This kills the Ministrant of Obligation, but it's going to trigger Afterlife so he gets 2 1-1 one -one Spirits, then he's going to draw 2 cards off the Skull Clamp, and with nothing else to just pass the turn right back to Aiden. Aiden will draw his card for turn, and play a Snow-Covered Forest as his land for turn, then he's going to tap for 1 black in order to cast a Vasir Seer. After that, he's going to tap out the rest of his mana for 3, and he's going to cast a Woestrider. When it enters the battlefield, he will get a 0-1 Goat token, and with nothing else, he will just pass the turn to me. Leading up the 4th cycle of turns, I'll untap, draw my card for turn, and I'll drop a Spire of Industry as my land for turn. After that, I'm not going to miss combat again, so I'll attack Aiden for 2 with Magda, and that's going to trigger both Magda and Curse of Opulence, so I'll drop a Gold token, and Magda will give me a treasure. Then Aiden can move to blocks, he's going to block with the Seer, and he doesn't sacrifice it because he wants my Magda to die to combat damage. In my second main phase, I'll tap for 4 mana and I'll cast my commander, Galazeth Prismari. When Galazeth enters the battlefield, he has an ETB, so I'm going to be able to drop a treasure token. After that, I have no further action, so I'm just going to pass the turn right back to Guy, who will untap and draw his card for turn. Then he's going to minus 3 his Kazmina and drop a Fractal, and because it's a minus 3, the Fractal comes in with 3 plus 1 plus 1 counters on it. Then he's going to tap out for all of his mana, and he's going to cast his commander, Tanazir Quandrix. When Tanazir enters the battlefield, he can double the plus 1 plus 1 counters on the creature, so we'll make his Fractal a 6-6, six, six. he'll play a basic forest as his land for turn, and with nothing else, we'll move back to Calvin's turn. Calvin will draw for turn, and then he'll play a Snow-Covered Swamp as his land for turn. Then he's going to follow suit with the rest of the table and tap out to cast his commander, Shadrick's Silver Quill. Then he'll move to combat. So, like, we can be friends, right? I just like doing my own thing over here, so yeah, probably. Like, don't, don't, don't politic with Calvin, you're gonna hate yourself for it later. What's up? Well, I'm thinking that he's a problem. Why am I? It's turn four, I played oh, my, my commander. <laughs> How much mana do you have? Yo, come on, man. Calvin, you're, four. The, Calvin, you're the problem. You help know that, right? Help a Crypt's yeah. brother out. As long as I turn my Crypt's around. Guy, this Tormund's Crypt doesn't affect you. Clamp. You've got a Skull Clamp. We're not ignoring your Skull Clamp, Calvin, it exists. Like, what do you, you, what do you, what do you want me to do for you, for these favors? What are you asking for? Oh. Um, in, the, in the short term, you join me in beating down the Izzet Menace. I can't, I can't make any promises like that. You can't make any promises like that? I can. Come on, man, I'm cursed. Help a brother out. After some failed politics with Guy, Calvin's gonna give Aiden a 2-1 Inkling with flying, and he's gonna choose to give all of his creatures plus one plus one thanks to Shadrix. After that, he'll try to pass to Aiden, but before he can, Aiden's gonna sacrifice that goat and scry one, and he'll put that card at the bottom of his deck. Then he'll untap and draw his card for turn. In his first main phase, he'll drop a snow-covered forest as his land for turn. Then he's going to tap out for 5 for a brand new card, Ghidorah Grave Gardener. After that, he'll just pass the turn to me, but before he can, I'm going to tap for 5 and cast Intellectual Offering. I'm going to choose two people to do one thing with me, and I will do both. I'm going to untap all non-man permanents I control and draw three cards. You will untap all non-man permanents you control. You will draw three cards. Yay! Cool. Non-man permanents. Do I do it now? Yep, yep. 
No one has any responses, so Guy will untap all of his non-lands, I will untap all of my non-lands, and then I will draw three cards, and so will Aiden. With nothing else, I'm going to bin Intellectual Offering, and we'll move to my turn, so I'll untap, and I will draw my card for turn. Then I'll use two of my artifacts to tap for red and blue for instants and sorceries, and cast one of my new favorite cards, Expressive Iteration. I'll look at the top three cards in my library, I'll decide to say that I can cast Milkum till the end of my turn, and I'll put one of those cards at the bottom of my deck. After that, I'll play my land for turn, in this case it'll be a basic island, and then I'm going to go ahead and go to combat. I'll attack Aiden with my commander, which is going to trigger my Curse of Opulence, and I will drop a gold. Then Aiden will go to blocks, block with an inkling, sacrifice it to Wosh Rider to scry a card, and he decides to leave that card on top. After that, I'm going to tap my Spellscape for mana, all my golds for mana, and a land for mana, and I'm going to cast Reshape. I'll decide to sacrifice a gold to the Reshape, and I'm going to search my library for an artifact with CMC 2 or less to put into play. In this case, I'm going to go grab a Howling Mine. The Howling Mine comes into play, I'll bin the Reshape, then I'm going to tap for 3 mana to cast that Milkum that I exiled off of my Iteration. After that, I'll tap the Howling Mine for mana so no one can draw cards off of it, and I'll just pass the turn right back to Guy. Guy will untap and draw his card for turn, and in his first main phase, he'll play Scavenger Grounds as his land for turn. After that, he's going to wind up tapping for a total of 3 mana, and he's going to cast Rishkar Pima Renegade. When it enters the battlefield, it triggers, so Rishkar will get a counter, and his commander will get a counter. Then he's going to minus 1 that Kazmina, and he's going to make a Fractal, and since it was a minus one, it comes in with one plus one plus one counter. After this, he's going to suspiciously pass the turn. Calvin will untap and draw his card for turn, and then I'll play a Snow-Covered Plains as his land for turn. After that, he's going to tap for one mana, and he's going to cast Scheming Symmetry, choosing him and Aiden to both tutor to the top. I have a response. For free, I'm going to cast Deflecting Swat, and I'm going to change those targets to me and Aiden. This resolves, so both Aiden and I will get to tutor a card from our libraries and put it on top of our decks. It's not common information, so I'll show you that I have a Cyclonic Rift, and Aiden grabs a Bolus's Citadel. Calvin will sadly bin that Scheming Symmetry, having gained no value off of it, then he's going to tap for 2 mana and cast Tithe Taker. After that, he'll head to combat and use his Silver Quill the same way. He'll give Aiden an Inkling, and he'll pump his whole team with 1 plus 1 plus 1 counter. Then he's going to head to declare attacks, and he'll hit me with everything that he can. I don't want to take 8 from his Double Striking Dragon, so I'll block it with Milkum, then I'll take a grand total of 6, dropping to 34. In Calvin's second main phase, he'll pay a life to his caves, and I'll cast Beseech the Queen. This will allow him to tutor a spell that has CMC equal or less than the number of lands he controls. In this case, he's just going to grab Praetor's Grasp, add it to his hand, and with no further actions, he's just going to pass the turn right back to Aiden. Aiden's going to untap, draw his card for turn, and in his first main phase, he'll play a Snow-Covered Swamp as his land for turn. Then he decides it's time. He's going to tap out and cast that Bolus' Citadel that he picked up off of the Scheming Cemetery. Now those of you paying attention will notice that I've sped up the footage in the background, and this is because Aiden's going to spend some time spinning his wheels with the Citadel. Now if you're one of those nerds who wants to see exactly how he spends this turn with the Citadel, I'll leave an unlisted link to a video in the description and a card on the screen to a video of him actually doing this in real time with nothing sped up, and it'll just be the room sound. That's for any of you who really want to see how he does this turn. But here's some key interactions that happen while he's spinning his wheels. At some point here, he's going to cast Yavamaya Elder off of the top, paying 3 life, and then he sacrifices it to go get 2 lands. Now mind you that he does have Yodora Grave Gardener in play, and a free sack outlet, so because of this, anything he sacks is going to turn into a basic forest once it hits the graveyard. He's also eventually going to find a Blood Artist while doing this, so now when he stacks creatures to his Woe Strider, he's going to be able to drain gain, and in this particular particular turn, he's going to choose to drain gain me every time he sacrifices a creature. With those key interactions in mind, he's going to continue to spin the wheels until eventually, it happens. Let's see what's on top. Whoa! <laughs> is it? Is the top on top, Ivan? Play it, pussy. Sensei's defining shit! We're in so much trouble, you guys! So now Aiden has access to Sensei's divining top. How this is going to interact with his Bolus' Citadel is he can leverage his life total to start drawing a lot of cards. The loop is simply he taps his top to draw a card and put top back on top, and then thanks to Bolus' Citadel, he can cast the top from the top of his deck. Now I once again want to remind you of the link in the description if you do want to see this whole thing, because he's going to spend quite a bit of time using his top to draw a ton of cards. He's even going to cast a few cards with the key card that he winds up casting off of the top of his library being 10 to the Pests. The relevancy here is that since his Divining Top causes him to lose a life every time he plays it, 
but he has a sack outlet and a blood artist, so every time you sacrifice one of those pests, he's gonna gain two life, letting him dig even deeper. Now eventually, while going through these motions, he's gonna wind up finding a tragic slip, and since he sacrificed permanent, it is gonna turn on the ability to give a creature negative 13, negative 13 till end of turn, so he's gonna use it on one of Guy's creatures, which does prompt a response. This tragic slip will be targeting Guy's commander, so he's gonna tap all four of his creatures for mana, it'll be clear how he does that in just a moment, He's also going to tap three of his lands. He's going to wind up casting Chord of Calling, where X equals four. That's going to have him searching his library for a card. In this case, he's going to get Toothy, and then Partner Triggers, so he also gets to go grab Peer. With that out of the way, Guy's Commander will die, and Aiden's going to keep going through his deck using the Sensei's Divining Top. He's going to wind up drawing a bunch of cards, losing a handful of his life in the process, but at some point, he's going to wind up with a very specific card on the top of his library that allow him to cast some cards from his hand. The card in question is going to be Squandered Resources, one of Aiden's favorite cards. This is going to pair really great with a card he has in his hand, it's going to be Grim Tutor. He gets to sacrifice three of his lands to cast Grim Tutor, losing some life, and tutoring for a card called Aetherflux Reservoir. It's a card that combos with Bolas the Citadel and the Census Divining Top. Then he can sacrifice some more lands in order to cast the Aetherflux Reservoir from his hand into play. Using Sensei's Divine Top, I can draw a card, right? Yep. It'll go on top, and then I'll pay a life to play it, but at this point I've cast an, huh? at least like 15. an arbitrarily high He cast an arbitrary amount of spells already. This triggers the game that much life. He's gonna loop that, and then we have we're dead. so much life. We're dead. I, yeah. <laughs> we're dead. Good game, sir. Woo! Fuck. The tutors. <laughs> uh, tutors. Oh, so that one. Four, three. He caught him as a man. So that was the game. That was the game. That that you saw what happened. That was actually a little fast compared to you know what might be the normal. Not the fastest, but still pretty stonks. What the what the wither bloom deck could normally do. Yes. He did have the gas. He did have the weird. What I believe was the scheming savagery play that game. But that's what happens when you give yeah. someone a free tutor. But you know. Yeah. That's, political deck. Yeah. Well, you were gonna give him the tutor anyway. Yeah. Political deck. Political deck. I wasn't political, but I had to give it to someone, and it wasn't gonna be the other fucking blue player, or you, who wanted the tutor in the first place. That is fair. Yeah. Yeah. So. We want to talk about, at the end of the video, like we typically do in our normal videos about how the decks perform. We've sent Scrap the from least impactful to the most impactful format, but in this case, I think it is worth going in that order because we have the players that play the game in the room with us behind the camera. Yeah, who number one. Who least impactful? Who do you think was least impactful? I'm gonna be perfectly honest. I think the least impactful player that for being honest, the entire night was the Quandrix player. I think it was the Quandrix player. Womp womp. Womp womp. That, that, was, that was Guy himself let's, chiming in for buying the Let's give Guy some defense here. He had to build his deck very quickly because he was the last to pick his dragon and he started on Lorehold. And it wasn't until I got everyone submitted their list to me so I could make sure no one was trying to low-key kill us on turn two, I realized these decks are all really good. And then I looked at the Lorehold deck and I'm like, this is as good as a Burrows deck can be. It's a Boros deck though. It plays Sacred Foundry. I'm afraid for the future of this deck on this channel. Um, so we were like, why don't you switch to the thing with Islands? Even if Quandrix isn't the best commander, you get to play Islands. 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 Turns out Islands are really good. But that game, he kind of started to execute his game plan. He did, you played Kazmina that game. You played Kazmina and you set up a really cool play that I think everyone saw from a mile away because you minus your Kazmina, left your mana up, five creatures, you were ready to cord for five, at least five if you wanted it. So you could have gotten Peregrine Drake, or more importantly, I think if you wanted the advantage, you could have gotten Orn Frostfang, were the two things I was afraid you were gonna get. In this game, it did not matter as much because of how fast the game went. That's basically what his deck did, and there's not a whole lot else to say about the Quandrix deck. Unfortunately, I think he made, I think he did a good job with what he had, but I don't think Quandrix is that good of a commander stacked up against the dragons that we played. I. Full disclosure, just looking at all the five Elder Dragons on paper, I think Quandrix is the weakest. Yeah, like there's a chance Lorehold would have been stronger in hindsight. Mm -hmm. Though, but then then again, Lorehold doesn't have blue. Lorehold does not, you cannot play counter spell. You can't play counter spell. Or green. Or, or green. green. Yeah, blue, it just, I was like, guy, why don't you just play breeding pool? It's probably fine, <laughs> you know? Or black. Or black. Speaking of black, the next in order of least impactful players, 
It, I'm pretty sure it was you. In this particular game, it was the Silver Quill deck because yep. if we remember correctly, it was the Scheming Symmetry play. I cast Scheming Symmetry. I did ask Deflecting Swats. I then, chose the targets, and then you were basically, you were just cucked out of any type of value you were going to get that turn, and I'm sure that was a huge part of your game plan, whatever that card yep. was going to be, so. Scheming Symmetry is in the Silver Quill deck because Silver Quill, as written, is just screams politics, right? Yes. And I don't know if we're going to have it in the video, but I was trying to negotiate with Iden, hey, I'm going to give you a thing, and then we're going to work together to turn off the blue decks, but then, you know. Thank you for the editor's note. I haven't edited the actual game yet, so I'll try to make sure to include that. Uh, but, you know, it didn't actually work out because Deflecting Swat is a good card. With that said, you know, I'm still very happy with how the deck performed for the night. If you saw the interview section, you know, you only passed so many of the tests. You won I, two of the games that day. I won four, you won two. It was yeah. actually very impressive. Uh, I think Silver Quill is low key like. I don't know what the most powerful dragon is. There's a chance it's just Galazath that has the highest ceiling because of like the way you're supposed to build the deck is stacks. For sure. deck. Yeah, but I think like if it's not that, it's it's probably Silver Quill. If you're a player with a high charisma stat, build Silver Quill. Play, yeah, exactly. If you can talk your friends into misplaying, build Silver Quill. Um, if you're not a player with a high charisma stat, or if you still just really like islands, Next on the list, Galazeth Prismari. I did not win a single fucking game that night. But what I did do was show up to the party every single game. The deck, the way I tune the deck, out of my fucking back there, was to just optimize Galazeth himself and always hold up mana to interact with everything. I'm also optimizing my deck with Swiftfoot Boots, Lightning Grief, Spell Skite, Deflecting Squat. I don't think this direction made the cut. There's a lot of stuff that just protect Galazeth out of the gate. And because of that, I just go land, land, maybe a rock, some type of way to farm, just extra artifacts, and then Galazeth, and I'm in. I didn't win any of the games, but I always got to play, and I actually, I actually was really happy with that. Like, I got to at least play Magic the whole time. Oh my goodness, it's, it's, I, I cannot over, or understate this at all. I can't overstate it enough. Every single game you played, the Prismari deck was a threat. Yeah. It, it, it just, it just happens naturally. Yeah. He's super slow in the beginning because he doesn't want to play rocks that, you know, right. speeds out. Yeah, yeah, because once you play a rock that just makes mana, the second you play Galazath, this becomes a dumb artifact because it makes mana or it makes mana. Where Howling Mine makes mana and draws me cards, mm -hmm. right? So you've got the, our Tormod's Crypt turns them off and makes mana. So, so you're always playing Galazeth basically on turn four. Yes, most of the time. But along the way, he's casting things like Howling Mine mm -hmm. or Lightning Greaves and the mm -hmm. second he casts Galazeth. Oh wait, how much mana do you have open on turn four? Yeah. Oh, three, I get it. Yeah. That's a problem. That game was more of a weak showing because it did end so quickly because we'll talk about that in a moment. But the, uh, the Belladros, uh, Witherbloom deck showed up to the party. Um, so let's talk about that because that's that's who won. It was I did yeah. What happened yeah, that game? Won. I cast Scheming Symmetry. He deflected and swallowed it. I didn't continue to be a target. For the I'll admit I was always going to keep I a target mm -hmm. because politically I was yeah. trying to keep him my friend. Wow. Yeah. Because um, you guys both played graveyard cards that interacted with each other so you be could... Because yeah. the board was half black, half blue. Oh, it's low-key magic racism. Cool. Outstanding. <laughs> no, you said it yourself. Don't let the blue players tutor. Don't let the blue players don't tutor. Let, don't let the blue players tutor, yeah. Th that's low key, but also the black players tutor is really bad too. Yeah, Anyone yeah, tutoring is really bad. Yeah. The Witherbloom deck won because Silver Quill gave it a tutor and the Deflecting Swap player made sure that happened. Yes. Um, It was a little fast, but it was one of the strategies that I made sure was built into the deck. What's interesting is that the way that you won was uh, Bol Bolus of Citadel, Aether Flex Wars of War, Census Divine Top, to tail as old as those cards. And it took a few pieces like to make it all work, like to get yeah. big that far. But but once you got that, that was the thing that you did. It, yeah. was, it was very big mana, right? Yeah. So you did not build this deck to be big mana, which is kind of why we're not going to interview you on your deck, because you're going to change it as I understand so, it. The, but here's here's my reasoning for going Aristocrat. Because right? that's what you it did. It worked with half the ability of Belladros, right? Yes. But then, even the Bolas of Citadel combo, when you have a Blood Artist out in Citadel, it's yes. very scary when you sack 10 yeah. permits to that Citadel. Mm -hmm. So that's why I really tried hard to make Aristocrats plus the big man of Citadel combo work. But what are you going to do now that you've seen how the deck plays? More big mana, less aristocrats. Less, just yeah. The Iden Arnotovic style. You could potentially yeah. still do aristocrats with the deck, but you got to do more focus on either side. Like no you less. Could, land I think you're supposed to go big mana build. That's what I'm going to do. Seven drop. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. Yeah. 
Play Sylvan Library. Play Sylvan Library. Was it in your deck? No, that card's no, that that so... 45 bucks. Yeah, yeah. That card's pretty good. <laughs> but that's how the decks performed. I was really happy with it. We might have more decks with these decks, more games with these dragons coming up soon. I think we're going to upload another game of this pod because there were a few interesting Because we played four games that we night, played for right? five hours. We played it for a bit of time. Yeah. But every single one of those games, in one way or another, were, were really good. They at least yeah. demonstrate something. There's even a special one that demonstrates bad threat assessment. From the Witherbloom player! Okay, but that you know, that be... was one of the weirdest choices. Okay, there's a Thrasios out, right? Ah, uh, don't! You're making it sound worse. You're, don't don't even think about it. There, there was a Frexian altar, and we're moving on. Listen. Um, listen. Oh, with no. all The with... Cynic player was gonna make a land drop. Yeah. <laughs> listen. Happen. With that said, um, someone was talking about plugging something, right? Yeah, this definitely isn't the second take of this fucking outro. Guys, check it out. We're recording this Sunday, so technically it hasn't happened yet. But, Matt, you saw him in the video. There are probably going to be more versions than just the one you saw in the video. We're talking with people, and by the time this video drops, there should be a link in the description to get these play mats. If there for some reason isn't, don't cut this part from the edit, because it's going to be there in like two days. So... Playmats. We're, we're having them. very good conversations. The blue uh, field playmat, you will see that. The orange field playmat, you might not have seen that. Wink. And edit, edit make sure to put up graphics of the playmats in the edit. And I have definitely been teasing, you know, all, all those anime trash lords out there because I am an anime trash lord. That will be there too. Are you? Oh. I love Kingdom Hearts. All right, Calvin, that's it. We talked about decks. We plugged our fucking shit. I'll do it this time. Thank you guys so much for watching. And as always, see you next time. Hey, 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 Mr. Mr. Hunter Man. Oh, Who are fuck. the patrons? We've got Brendan MCG, Kikaguru, uh, that's Phil, right? Ryan Colley, Ryan Foley. What's up, Ryan Foley? Hey, over there. Crystals, Acme, Nazriel, <laughs> Behemoth, Dutch McFadden. Okay. Was the what is Guy Scott Jacob Stark? Guy Scott's over there, by the way. Jacob Stark, Matt, Sydney Traeger, who the fuck? Matthew Robert, Clifford TV, Odran, Mc, McGowan, James Delenti, Hunter Parham, Rob B, Nicholas Devantier, Tom Zarek, Dot K3, Metzger, Shatris Williams Jr., Jacoby Sims, MB Guzzi, Doodle Humper. <laughs> Fucking love that guy's name. Um, F Jose Francisco LeBron Jr. Abzan Dan, there, that that's, that's your old name. Over. Scott Wicker, <laughs> Securus, Aaron Fallen, Thomas Schutt, Ryan Brower, Ryan Brower. Ryan Brower! Ryan Brower! Ryan Brower! Eric, Vog Daddy. Eric Vogel, Jonathan Nichols, Nichols Jay Porter, Observer Will, Will Tanner Han, JJ. And hopefully by the time this video goes up, we didn't miss the no one that knew how. Listen, man, you are all lovely. I've been wanting to do a full shout out for a while. I have alcohol in me. He does. I didn't consent to this. Uh, he didn't, <laughs> but he didn't stop me. His name was Ryan Brower. His name Bye. was Ryan nice. Brower. His name <laughs>